Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start, or kind of in the middle, of a new campaign for in Tierno, the Lasses of Europe, in which we are going to get, well actually we technically already have, someone in particular in mind as I've been playing as a Komi of a Republic called Seroff has been triumphant. Seroff did not smile often. He prided himself on his calm, cold exterior. After all, friendly and NKVD officer were not mixable traits. The last time he could remember himself smiling, genuinely smiling, not just a crocodile smile he gave to those he needed for his plans, was at his desk long ago. Writing out his masterpiece, he could remember the ecstasy and the final tap of the typewriter, he could remember the crushing blow of Suslov. Rather than even taking a moment to truly think about his writings, casting it aside, outside, aside out of hand, if only old Mikhail could see him now. He had worked hard in these last few years, going from the left to the right it was nearly unheard of, and it took much time for them to trust him as one of their own. He was no dude, at, not at all. At heart, he was still a socialist, just not one of those dawdling fools or naive idealists who seemed to think that slapping the same red coat of paint on Russia would be enough to win. He knew better. Maybe if Russia hadn't wanted to accept it then, but they were going to accept it now. He would make them so, or make them. And so, as the chaos swept the floor of the National Assembly, and men leapt from their seats in astonishment at what was thought to be impossible, Seraph allowed himself a genuine smile. How did he pull it off? With a lot of bad words and playing off screen. That's how he pulled it off. Yeah. Um, how we got here, I started off with the Komi Republic, uh, and then you usually have, you know, the elections, you have the coups, went with the right wing, um, and then we took out to the the order here, was it the order of the, yeah, the order of St. George, then struggled too much with uh, the WRF, I hate the WRF so much, but oh well, you know, that's why I did off screen, and then we went down through here, uh, they actually, the WRF actually annexed Vologda first of all, and then I went to war with the Brotherhood, and then Samada, and now we're here, like everything's already done, um, however, uh, if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead, because this is the unique Seraph stuff, and the Red Brown Alliance, we like it red and brown, it's very nice. And then lessons from Suslov as well, just because that's pretty much the only real focuses we have here regarding um, just Seroff in general. So, and I've already read through all this stuff so many times before, so I'm like, I don't want to read it again. But Restoration Day, if you'd like to read this, please go right ahead. So, slightly decreased scoring times. Um, it's already February 18th, 1966. I've just been kind of sitting here, um, and I've already spent all my army XP on some of these divisions. We're trying to make 40 combo wits eventually. Not quite yet, but we will. We've got some pretty good 20 combo wits right now. Uh, we start off... With Komi, with an IFV division, as you can see right here, we still have one IFV left. But I've converted most of this to APCs and uh, tanks already, which is really, really awesome. So, And just because we're waiting, we're just kind of like, all right, well, we need to kill off Onega, but we got to finish through these focuses first. Um, Equipment-wise, like, we got enough APCs. We've got enough IFVs as well. Eh, I don't know if we should really be making any more IFVs. Yeah, at this point, focus on more tanks and probably more artillery and guns. So cool. But if you'd like to read about... Uh, let's see, this one, finalizing industrial policy, please go ahead, but this is going to help us out. Our industrial expertise begins to improve rapidly, as well as industrial equipment, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. I don't know, I've, I've spent like two hours playing already off screen, and I, I'm just like ready to just raid these guys close to our rivals. Huh. Though Russia remains suspended in anarchy, it is through teamwork that we will skip this dreadful era. Warlords from all different backgrounds await a message. Some may wish for a painful demise. Others may seek to form a friendship. Others may only want to maintain a state of peace. Perhaps we can establish diplomatic relations with the other Russian powers. See how they are holding up. When our potential most valuable allies lay on the other side of Europe, our only other option is to extend our influence into Russia itself. Ivan Serev, a prince of terror. Can we find another partners? Uh, sure. Try to agree to establish diplomatic relations for now. Um, also, everyone else, like, we are literally the last group to unify here. It's 66, for God's sakes. Irkutsk 1, under Yagoda. Those CSRs led by Lekakov. Lekachov. And then we have, oh god, but Batov. Batov? Batov. Oh my goodness, no, no, no. Go ahead and raid him. And let's see. Infrastructure would be nice. If you want to be better to revitalize the Russian people, please go ahead. Very nice. And then refuse to be. Oh, I love this pot. Actually, by raiding these guys, we have enough time. Like, it's weird that we had to wait so long. But really, we generally do pretty okay with this stuff. We might actually lose here just because it's over river, and they do have forts. And I apologize for speaking so flippin' fast. It just, it's a trade I picked up for my mother. But realistically, like, technically, I suppose we could already go ahead and do this. But I want to get through all the focuses first. And actually, we've already gone up one level of uh, industrial equipment already off screen. So, rudimentary levels. We were on power tools, now we're here. Um, everything's going up a little bit, so really, I, it doesn't really matter to me which one we do. Uh, academic base, why not? Cool, just keep training if you need it. Like, food for hungry, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. 
And we've got a lot of PP, just because whenever we get to the next stage, we're going to need a lot of PP for, uh, you know, just improving society. Like. Um, and next up, we're getting up one more, so hopefully they might want to attack us. Probably not. Someone else might want to. But if you want to read about further infrastructure development, please go right ahead. You get a whole bunch more infrastructure, which I love, 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 love. We're building our civvies up quite nicely. Um, that's pretty much it. Like, it's, 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 it's definitely a struggle. If you've ever played, of course, most of you probably have. But if you ever played Komi Republic and TNO, it is a pain in the butt. It is a, it can be a huge pain. Luckily, actually, this time, when I started off, every time I tried to raid Vyaka, they, they either gave us stuff or we beat them. Which is actually kind of surprising, because I usually don't want to do Vyaka and raid them, because they can be pretty strong, especially when you're fighting over a river here. But, uh, surprisingly, I was actually able to, every single time, either get the tribute from them, or they just gave it to us. We just, we just beat them up. So, if you like to read about lessons from the Unification Wars, please go ahead. This will give us more than enough army XP. Additionally, we'll get a bo double bonus, 100% bonus, for land doctrine, which is great. Even though, technically, technically, if I'll show you over here, we're almost done with our land doctrine. I guess we have three we could usually use it for, but we're almost done with that stuff, so. It is what it is. But, man, have you seen Ivan Serov? I'm not gonna lie, you know, I'm pretty straight as they come, but he looks pretty handsome. He looks pretty handsome. He knows what's going on. Just saying. Looking pretty cool. He knows what's, what, what to do. Anyways. Um, cool. 34, three more. Nice. And then we'll finish this off. Now, we could always come back up here and do the anti-establishment pack. Actually, if you see right here, I actually went down this path for Tabby just because I wanted more war sport and political power. <laughs> so, like, I, I had nothing else to do, so I'm like, okay, well, we'll do Alexi Lives. Uh, that doesn't really help us out too much. New nationalism, which I've read before. Yeah, this doesn't give you very much. But it really doesn't matter. So, let's go ahead and do this one. Great! New focus tree, finally! Together, my friends, together. Oh, look how red we become! The West Russian National Soviet Republic unifies West Russia. With Comrade Serov, the Soviet motherland will be strong again. Oh, and we gotta get Onega first as well. I forgot about that. Oh, I should have went to Onega first. Concurrent frontal assaults? Yes, please. Invade. So, let's stop trading. Oh, we have 16 divisions. Jesus Christ, that's so nice. Ah, oh, Warlord Fulfillment is gone. That is unfortunate, but whatever. Do we have any planes? We have a few early fighters and a few pieces of cast. Like, I've literally just been sitting here waiting to do stuff, so... Go right on in when you can. And, because we've reunified, uh, raiding and looting probably goes bye-bye. We can do all this stuff, so. There you go. There you go. I'm not even going to read. I want all. I want everything over here. I don't care. I just want everything. Uh, make sure. Uh, let's wait for that one first. Wait, 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 wait. Cool. Nice. Cool. I, I don't care. I want it all done. I just want it all done. I want it all done. No questions asked. I mean, honestly, I guess we could do it. But it's just better to get the political power for now. This doesn't matter. This stuff doesn't matter. This gives you something, a bonus for a few days, and you lose political power. Over here, all you get is 10 political power. That's not worth it. I'd rather keep the 10 political power. Look at that flag, though. That's awesome. Did that change color, too? Onega? I mean, I know some people want me to play as Onega. I know some people actually want me to play as the Dilvenga Brigade, which I want to. I don't know. That's just the biggest thing about the Dilvenga Brigade is, like, even though it won't last very long, which is fine, it just, I don't know. I want him to be a unifier, which doesn't make any sense, but... I'd love it if, if he was a unifier. I would absolutely love it. All you need is a capital. Get the tanks over there, and you'll be able to hopefully take them out. Probably. There you go. And there you go. They're gone. That's good. We're going to invade Finland all the way. Did they change colors? The Republic of Finland looking really nice. That's a nice light green. But aren't they usually white? Uh, guys, go, 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 go. Do not... Do not waste time here. Um, anything else? Oh, yeah, integrate them. That'd be muy bueno. Ah, yes, batch production is very good. This one doesn't really matter too much. Obviously, the right side's a little bit better, but this one, it, we started off that way, so I figured, why not? Uh, practical industrial administration is very nice. Oh, I forgot about this, too. Uh, good. Spending doesn't matter. Spend, 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 and there you go. And you know what? Spend some more right now. Cappy Flow, if you want to go with that, please go ahead. A toaster of future success. Great. Because we want to build as much as possible right now. Build, build, build. Well... We can't really build when we have so much overextended government, but whatever. Also, hunting opposition is still here for some reason. Let's see. Soslav has been arrested and imprisoned. Zadana was eliminated. Bukharina, Bukharina fled the country. Kosygin and Stalina has been arrested and imprisoned, as well as Voznesensky. So, anti-communist offices. Oh, with the anti-communist volunteer guard in our hands, we are faced with a large body of prisoners of war, with the rank and files largely irrelevant. What we... 
But what we decide to do with the officer court is another matter. Ust Suslovsk is in need of skilled officers and pardoning, commissioning some of them could help swell our ranks within, with competent instructors with three options. We can release the most important skilled officers from prison and integrate them into our army. We can pardon the officers and integrate them into our army, yeah. Uh, pardon them and release them from prison, but not offer them commissions. Finally, we can simply leave them to run in prison. Now, I actually commissioned the officers uh, with Samara, Samara, so I don't really care about these guys. Uh, I'd prefer to see him. Ah, let's get some more war sport. Let's get some more war sport. Oh, they were maxed out already. Offensive war, four-year draft. We're on the four-year draft, by the way. Sectiv car arsenal, no draft exemptions. We have a high level of poverty, which sucks, but it is what it is. Oh, here we go. Nice. The Ordo Socialist Revolution, Ordo Socialism, has prevailed in Western Russia. The superiority of our ideology has been affirmed, and that all that's left is to reconquer Russia. Unfortunately, in order to be able to embark upon such a mission, we must first recognize the state in accordance with Ordo Socialist doctrine. We had neglected to do so earlier in the hopes that the people would fall in line and work with the party, but it appears that we were mistaken. The rot of the Suslav and his cosmopolitan illusions reek still, and if we are to bring Russia back to its former glory and power, it must be cleansed, purified by fire, possibly by firing squad, if need be. Absolutely. Absolutely. I apologize that I didn't get this one earlier. National unity. Ooh, yes. Strengthens the right wing of the party. We lose political power and weekly manpower for more weekly stability. That's not bad, but I don't do the national unity. Auto socialism. While already having been successful in the spread across Russia thus far, it's rather undefined. That is to say, while the broad strokes of the ideology have been explored, such as the ideas of Russia, Russian supremacy and preeminence of the state and society, we have no ideological aspirations. It's easy to say that we should reunite Russia and reconquer Muscovy, ending German influence and rule in Russia once and for all, but what after? What will our new Russia look like? How should the Russian people strive to be? We must answer these questions. Yes, yes, absolutely, 100%. Going to that too. Uh, I'm not super worried about this. With 20 combat with infantry, it's not bad. They have only up to 10 divisions. Obviously, we only have 16. So, it is what it is. You know, I wish it was better. And we only get point for every single day. But, I think division per division, we're pretty good. I mean, we do have a, that pink division. Uh, no. No, no. Whenever we fight these guys, I just want to just kill them all. Just, the Finns made a massive mistake by pissing us off, by taking our lands. When we were weak, of course. And, uh, so, they show rule really the consequences. They chose their fate. We shall choose our own. And we have Larianov here. Oh, Larianov. Uh, the auto socialist revolution. Yes, please. The split without a sound. It was like most of Warsaw's quiet at the end, between all screaming, of course. The arguments have been long and intense. Auto socialism, after all, but was built on nothing if it was not built on change. Who were the workers, anyway? What scientific method could be used to delineate the proletarian from the oppressor, the innovative from the parasitic, the good from the donned? And what did it mean to give these proletarians, if it was indeed their true name, the means of production? Would the committees be run by the elite, who, after all, were used to power? Or to unsteady newbies whose enthusiasm falls stripped their existence or experience? Not to mention the matter of who the enemy was, of course. Of everyone. Everyone knew there was an enemy. The propaganda rang true, and the paranoia was fresh and bright as a smell of blood in the winter snow. They looked behind every doorway. The subtle strings tugging at the Russian heart, angling innocence into complacency, paratism, sin. The question remained. Unanswered and unanswerable, a dagger at the heart of Sarah's movement. Who was the enemy? And if they were a class in a class of society, both of which the Marxists were adamant about, how could one ever tell an enemy from a friend? In the end, it simply wasn't worth the trouble, fighting over a deafening void and a slowly collapsing loyalty to a silent leader. The passionary elements seemed to fall away all at once from the base. Serov used to pummel the legislation through the assembly, as if some invisible chain had been lifted. And it was clear that something fundamental had changed in the Republic. Like most divorces, it was quite at the end. The mess, however, spoke for itself. This will not be pleasant, and the children will suffer for the divorce. But, you know what? Such is life. Um, the su revolutionary succession strengthens the left wing. Ooh, state atheism. Are on our own way. Ooh. Purchase vocal right wings from the party. Or right... Or wed... Wed? Red, white, reconciliation. Together to greatness. Well, really, we to empower the right to get this part. I don't know which one's better. I kind of want to do the right wing, though. But... The proletarian nation will define a role as a proletarian nation to lead the fight against international capital. The moral code of auto socialism. Let's do that one. Proletarian nation. At the heart of auto socialism lies the Russian worker. The proletariat is and always will be the most important aspect of auto socialism and of Russia as a whole. After all, Russia is the birthplace of the revolution, of socialism as a viable ideology. Let's cling to this identity, even in the face of oppressive German and Japanese empires. The conspiracy of international capital against Russia will be avenged, but only through faith in Russia and the party can this be achieved. Oh, no, I have to figure out which way I want to go. Does this hurt us? I don't want to choose now. 
The synthesis of socialist values with nationalistic features has given rise to the ideology of ordo socialism, and its adherents range across the political spectrum, from hardline commies to fascists. Well, while the core of the ideology has been established, however, its direction is not. Whichever wing of the party, left or right, proves victorious in the internal power struggle will determine the movement's future. Oh crap, I don't want to decide this now. I just want to have Seraph moments. Yeah, I don't want to see this either. Alright, national unity. The proletarian nation. Peace has been brought to Vietnam. Good job, Vietnam. And then, the moral code of ordo socialism wants... Uh, I think that one. Number one, loyalty, loyalty to ordo socialism and the love of Russian motherland. Conscious work for the good of the society. One does not work, one does not get to eat. Three, care for the collective property, as well as the multiplying of the pro this property. Four, high consciousness of the social responsibilities and intolerance to the violation of social interests. 5. Collectivism and camaraderie, for one and for all, and all for the party. 6. Humane relationships between party members, one party member is a friend, a comrade, and a brother to any other follower of ordo socialism. 7. Honesty, ethical cleanliness, uh, as well as simplicity and modesty both in private and public life. 8. Mutual respect in the family and care for the upbringing of the children. 9. Intolerance to injustice, social paratism, unfairness, careerism, and acquittiveness. Uh, oh, my apologies for my mispronunciations. Acquittiveness against our own peoples. 10. Loyalty between all nations of the USSR to Russia. 11. Intolerance to all the enemies of Russia. 12. Brotherly solidarity to all Russians within our nation. Yes. Alright, so it's not looking too bad. It's not looking great. Not too bad, but it is what it is. Um, let the tanks do whatever they need to do. The infantry is doing actually quite well already, so let them do whatever they need. We have a lot of political power here. Same mask or same face, different masks. All right, they've they've got a lot more guys now. That's a lot more divisions than uh, I originally expected. Okay, well, all right, you guys come over here too. You're gonna force the attack from here on out. They will not win against us. The Finns will die. They have no manpower. Anything they do here, oh, they oh, wonderful. Ah, oh, see, I knew it. Keep racking up those casualties. Keep racking them up. The peace deal has not been signed yet. The proletarian nation. The moral code of ordo socialism. Oh, it's sad. Ah, the same face. Different masks. Comrades, workers. Have we not seen the true face of imperialism? Yes, my friends. I speak of international capital in its most savage and unrelenting form. All of us were brought here by the winds of fate, but it was fascism that channeled those winds and brought the Union down from atop our heads. We all remember the days of fear, the days of the swastika and the Bosch. Now I ask, why was it the German that brought Russia to ruin? Why was it that the German formed simultaneously so coarse as to drive all the destruction before it, and so strong it managed to bite half of Russia before it was stopped? More importantly, we have heard so much over the years as to the Americans and their fabled salvation in bombs and planes. Why is it that these so-called Americans are worshipped when they have never stepped foot in the Rodina? The answer is simple, and I believe it lies in the same ethnogenetic patterns that have been born our true and perfect worker state into being. The Americans, Germans, they are not, as some would believe, in perpetual conflict. No, the capital parasites that govern the American economy would gladly have us lap up that lie that their so-called liberalism is in conflict with the fascism, so much so that they would see it destroyed everywhere. What nonsensical rhetoric from such a mighty nation. No, their real and perpetual enemy has been bred into their very genes. The codes of life that govern America, Japan, and Germany, the monstrous capital fascists of the world, are immune to mercy precisely because they are by nature incorruptible from their original form. Yes, I say to you that these three wear different masks, but the same beast holds all their faces, and their tongues drool with anticipation for the destruction of the Russian state. We will endure the monsters and the false prophets too. I'm not really sure. So what's the benefits of either side? Doing the left or the right side? Ooh, I like this one. Oh, he's really good as a field marshal. This guy, though, Larianov. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with him. Sorry. Sorry, dude. But we're gonna go logistics and get adaptable next. Sorry, Larry, enough, but maybe later. Um, for uh, two level less, less on defense. This guy's more in defense, but he's got better plan. Mm, five percent. No, it's only two percent. My eye up. Yeah. You. Uh, yeah. That's how we decide things, yeah, my friends. That's how we decide things. A Russian victory in the northern wall. You bet your big booty that we won here. Seraf isn't messing around. No more cowabunga for the Finns. 100%, so that's pretty nice, actually. And just, just so I don't forget about this later. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, on this side, too. Oh, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, seriously. I, I, at the time of this recording, I don't know what the difference is left and right, like, for auto socialism. Uh, I, I assume the left one is probably more, like, for more worker stuff, but I could be wrong about that. Like, I could be 100% wrong about that. Oh, supply chain reinforcement. Very good. 
I'm gonna wait till we get another blueprint to do that one. We gotta just focus on this stuff a whole bunch, so. Please, 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 get more factory output. We need more tanks, we need more everything, pretty much. Um, since we're here anyways, though, let's go improve our 40 combat divisions and make them actually 40 combat width. We already have four artillery. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Go high, because we like you high. And uh, I'd like to throw that on for now. Uh, how much recon do we have? Oh, we've got enough. We can do that one for now. That's fine. Um, That's the last group you're going to make. There you go. Good enough for now. The Great National Pride. Oh, military construction is good, good, good. Keep going, keep going. You ain't stopping yet, son. Now, what's next? Which one of these reduces administrative strength? Ooh, 10% more political power. I like that one. The Mamlukization. Like, the Mamluks that were, like, in control of Egypt or something from, like, EU4 back in the day. Strength in the left wing. Wiretapping. Capital punishment. Ooh. I got any star that potty order. Ooh. More hack and defense on court territory. Plus 15%. Jesus Christ. But I'd rather get this. I want more. Ooh, yeah, let's do this. Ooh, yeah. The National Pride of the Great Russians. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, but Russia is a race of proud, strong men and women. For the last thousand years, we have suffered possibly more than any other peoples in history. Famine, winter, plague, and invasion arrived at our doorstep at one point or another, and time and time again, we Russians have endured. There is no race of people so great in all the world, certainly not those traitorous dogs who hold Moscow across the border. At one time, our empire was the largest in the world, and in time, this will be true once again. 8.2 billion? That's not too bad, actually. Hey, we're looking pretty good. And then we'll go with this one, maybe? Yeah, I definitely want to get this one next. Get as much political power as fast as possible. Spending cut for now. That's fine. It hurts our output, but I don't really care. The state-forming nation. Russia, though more divided and separate than it has been in generations, retains one key aspect that no other nation on Earth can claim. We are Russian. Russia is, in and of itself, the exceptional nature. And the future of this world is inherently intertwined with the future of Russia. When Russia is once again reunited, this time under auto-socialism, we will assume our role as vanguard against all the evils of the world, whether that be fascism, capitalism, or cosmopop... Oh yeah, cosmopolitanism. From the ashes, our Russian state will rise anew. But seriously, what is this left or right side? Because, like, yeah, you get more fascism, or you get more, uh, like a socialism, I guess, ish. But, or authoritarian socialism, whatever it is. Oh, hello. How are you? Thanks for coming by. Um, you need the party? Oh! Balances left and right. The slightly right leaning. Oh, okay. Uh, I, is, there a, is there a spear here? Okay. So, with this side, you get more fascist and uh, nationalist political power. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, it just makes more sense maybe right now, because we did go right to do this first. Ah, uh, man. Uh, we're going to do the social utanarianism next. The federative institutions that mark the old Soviet regime have no place in a nation. No... No. Only is such a system of governance inefficient, but it is also a threat to the party. By allowing regional governments to govern themselves under federal setup, we invite the chance for said governments to work against us, supplied in secret, even to rebel. We mustn't allow it. Additionally, a unitary government will allow for more efficient use of resources and a simplified management of the economy, as all executive decision-making and bureaucratic implementation is centralized. No problems with centralization, my friends. Absolutely no problems. I guess, I I'm gonna, no matter what choice I make, it's going to disappoint somebody here. So I'm probably going to go with the right side, just because we're already so right-wing. I mean, it'd be cool to go with left-wing, but still, like... But I think we'll probably go with the right-wing, just so I can get the administrative strain further done. And that's one, two, boom, and you get another one done. Or, you just go boom, boom, and help reduce that. So, red-white reconciliation. Order socialism isn't one monolithic mode of thought or ideology. It is an ideology with the capacity to change and adapt, in this case. To, in order to further the party's interests and influence in Russia at large, we will need to appeal to the broader range of Russians, who ascribe to all sorts of politics. To that end, we should seek to incorporate the right wing into the order socialist apparatus of the party. Accepting these people into the fold can only serve to strengthen us in our interests going forward. And I'm sorry if you want me to go to the left wing, uh, I guess I'll spend 100 political power for now for that. Slightly right-leaning, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I really don't care. I'll be honest. I really don't care. Um, but I have to make a choice. Also, Bormann won in Germany. I didn't tell you guys that. Yet. Oh, and it goes for Indonesia. Goodbye. The bald man won down here. And we have Thatcher here. Never mind. Thatcher's gone. Montgomery's here. Huh. Okay. Thatcher actually won earlier, but whatever. From here on out, let's keep some more PP. And then... Actually, what does this one do? 
Yeah, that's okay. Together to greatness. In order to mend the rift that has grown between the leftist auto socialists and the right wing auto socialists, we should approach some right wing leaders with some offers of positions in the government. These positions won't be glamorous or particularly powerful, but it would go a long way towards normalizing and improving our relations with them. This may slightly weaken uh, Sidov's power within the party, but by opening up our candidate selection pool for jobs in the government to people further to the right, we'll also be expanding our talent pool, increasing the government's ability to find skilled candidates for jobs. I'm sorry if this is not the way you want me to go, but hey, it is what it is. I saw. It's just, I don't really care left or right. It doesn't matter. Cool. As long as Russia wins in the end. That's all I care about. 8.1 billion, not bad. Another division, good. Make them nice and thick. If the divisions aren't thick, we don't want them. The Knight of the Long Pens. Between the razor's edge of socialism and the dull anvil of the conservatives, there thought uh, there would be little precious leeway. He was lucky he wasn't a negotiating man. This was no place to bargain, and with his erstwhile followers, men he could barely trust even in the same room. It didn't look promising to start testing the waters right this moment. Sawing, he needed his temples. A half-written speech crumpled to his side who would join the others. In the buttons soon enough, darn the passionary and their internal discipline habits. Had it been enough that he'd enthusiastically dog-whistled to their basis, most irritatingly... Uh, capitalist desires to gain a seat at the table. Now his hands were tied and his mouth was stopped, or stoppered, just at the moment when his triumph was supposed to be full and complete. Well, at least his treatise on the rights of the Sovereign Nation was complete, but what an incoherent jumble of ultra-nationalistic sentiment it was, but it had been the only way to make their idea acceptable to both his conscience and the appetites of the passionary. Moving to the eternal enemy section, however, that was promising in a way mere centrism had never been. Yes, if there's one thing Seraph knew best in his long years of serving the Republican left, it was a rooting out of enemies, and the many ways one developed of finding them. For the people had many enemies, but some would always be dis less disguised, less disguisable and than others. We will purge the Republic together. More National Socialism. And the reawoken consciousness. The new Soviet man can be described as a lot of things. He's intelligent and educated. Well versed in traditional Marxist Leninist literature as well as more modern ordo socialist literature. He is watchful and vigilant, reporting to the proper authorities in any misdeeds or crimes he sees. He is patriotic and nationalistic, secure in the knowledge that Russia and the Soviet Union stand higher than any other nation on this earth. Above all also, he is loyal, obeying the state, and having full faith in Serov's wisdom and guidance. This is a new Soviet man, and you will become him, if not for patriotism, then for your life. We lose some growth, which is fine, whatever. And we get 10% more factory output, which is actually pretty darn nice. That's actually pretty good. More factory output is always good. Halt direct operations. Now we're good. And give us another day. And bingo, bongo, dingo, wongo. Yay. Cut military spending. Increase civilian spending. Because we want to produce, produce, produce. Nice. Followed up with Heroes of the Past. I want to get to do that one fast. Heroes of the Past. Russia has a vast and extensive history, one which should be respected and studied. From the Teutonic invasion of the 13th century, to the Napoleonic Wars of the 19th century, to the Great War of past decades past. Russia has endured and shall continue to endure in the future. It's important that we remember these heroes of Russia's past and understand how they brought Russia to the greatness. Our ancestors did much to make Russia what it once was, and following in the footsteps, we shall do the same. Under the great banner of auto socialism. If you want to about this, please go ahead. The race to the Urals is upon us, my friends. Um, how, many, how strong are these guys? The Grand Russian Army, huh? Well, you have one Grand Russian Army. Well, how about us? We have the... Oh my gosh, that's a big army. Okay, yeah. Um, some of these guys are actually... Quite a few of them are actually 40 combat with. Um, we're probably going to launch military invention. Uh, crud. That sucks. That really sucks. Yeah, I'll probably have to launch military intervention to them. Well, just give us time to make our divisions even bigger and bigger and bigger and make more of them. The New Auto Socialist Man. We have begun the creation of a new Auto Socialist Man, an archetype that all Russians should aspire to become one day. An Auto Socialist Man is a useful tool for further instilling and cultivating the corrupt values in the populace, and it should help Auto Socialism permeate their ordinary routines of daily life. The new auto socialist man is to be selfless, learned, athletic, and enthusiastic in spreading the auto socialist revolution. The auto socialist man is not driven by crude impulses of nature, but by conscious self mastery, rejection of the unconscious, and the innate personality. His work should require exertion and self improvement. The ideal example of the auto socialist man should always aspire to break his record quotas for each day of work.
The Ordo Socialist man would be conscientious of class and national struggles. He lives and dies by the teachings of Ordo Socialism, Marx, and Serov. He gives all he can to his country, to Russia. He treats public property with respect as if it were his own. He decries and denounces the capitalists and imperialists of the world, praises and supports the military, and answers the call of duty when his home finds itself at war without hesitation. Above all else, the new Ordo Socialist man obeys Serov and his teachings. He informs his, his authorities of dis dissidents. He combats the reactionary threat whenever it may appear, even if it rears its head within his own family. He serves as government and leader with everything he has, for that is every citizen's duty. We expect great things for the new Order Socialist men, as we should. We're going to go and train these guys, because uh, this group is done, which is awesome. Well, as you saw earlier, we're out of artillery, which is not very good. So do that to five and go up to there. We're missing quite a bit of stuff, so no more cutting down other stuff. Yeah, we're not. We're going to lose the, the girls. We'll have to militarily intervene, which is fine, whatever. Oh, hello. Um, if that's a case, there you go. Mm, I might go with three armies for this group. We'll see. And Vasily Melsh Melshkin Melshkin Melshkin. All right. Anything here? Nope. And then. Revolutionaries of the future. If we were to teach a new generation of revolutionaries for the future, we must first regale them with some stories of revolutionaries of the past. We must reintroduce Marx's teachings into the education curriculum so that our youngest will understand the basis of auto socialism and become better citizens of the state. We'll teach them of Lenin and his great crusade against the Tsar, the fall of Bukharin and the NEP, and the rise of a new Russian state, our auto socialist state. These students are to be the future of Russia. Let it, let's be sure to teach them well. Absolutely. A few 40 combos should be fine with these Orenburg states. Orenburg and that other state there, but, you know, we'll see. And then the Russian Union. With the Soviet Union of old destroyed, we have been granted an opportunity to reshape what the foundations of what the Soviet Union could be. Our new Soviet nation will at its core be a Russian nation first and foremost. Soslav's ideas of a union in which all races are equal are simply unfeasible, given the inherent superiority of the Russian people. These illusions of equality between the races of the USSR is part partially what led to its collapse in the first place. Thus, if a new Soviet Union is to be created, it must be created with the Russian people at its core, ruling the nation. Very good. Keep training for now, guys. I know we're out of a lot of artillery right now, but it is what it is. Actually, I don't mind sharing some of the gun stuff for now. Nice. The Mamlukization. One must be organized in every endeavor one embarks upon. In this case, we'll start with a list. The list will start small, but slowly, as we hear or notice things about the people working in the government. That list will grow. These things might be relatively minor, that like the use of certain words or maybe a manner of speech to egregious things like prof professing an interest in reactionary ideology or even questioning the great Serov. Once that list is complete, we will create another list. This list will have the names of all people about whom we have noticed things. That list will be handed off to a military officer, and then we'll, we will no longer have to worry about such people. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's just for the stability of the nation. Always for the stability of the nation. This is, this sucks. Man, this really sucks. But hey, everything's looking not too bad here. Uh, can we improve our, our military yet? I'd love to improve us. Yeah, we're just going to launch a military invasion. We have to. The foundation of a union. Serov and his highest ranking ministers were busy drafting the new USSR. This new USSR would address the problems Serov had seen and form in the past. The old Soviet Union had been too weak, too divided. The old Soviet Union sacrificed so much for so little gain. Serov and his government would re remedy these mistakes, and the new Soviet Union would emerge from the ashes stronger than ever before. One of the greatest weaknesses of the old union was its federalized structure. The bureaucracy became bloated. Local governments were given far too much autonomy. Only one has to look at what Kaganovich did with Western Siberia to see why it was a mistake. Serov's new Soviet Union would be a unitary structure. Local governments would be a mere stepping stone between the people and the capital, and all major decisions would go through the central administration first. The unitary apparatus or structure proved its efficacy in World War II, and with a strong united Japanese and Germans defeating the fractured Americans. The same unitary structure would be applied to any formerly autonomous administrations, as given the minorities their own identity merely weakened the Union's cohesion. The USSR was a Russian invention, but yet Bukharin sacrificed so much to try and please the other peoples within its borders. The Ukrainians, Belarusians, the Baltics, Turks, they did not answer directly to the capital, and therefore did not identify truly with Moscow in the end. Their loyalty failed us when it mattered most, and it proves that they cannot be trusted with the same freedoms Bukharin afforded them. Russia shall be the heart and soul of Serov's new Soviet Union as it always should have been. The foundations are set for something new. 
The hand in a velvet glove, though a state lacking the ability to control its people, lacks the ability to be a state at all. We must expand our network of informants and agents in order to match the pace at which our nation is expanding. Western Russia houses a lot of people, but many of which may harbor ill intent towards a benevolent regime. In order to amend this, not only uh, must our clandestine agency grow in size, but it must also grow in influence. Our officers and agents must become more active and involved. There should be an officer in every school, and an agent in every home. Such a presence will take time and effort, but the results will be well worth it. After all, all we do, we do for the people. Dialectic of the masses. Our ultimate goal must be above all other things to serve the people. In order to serve the people, we must understand what the people want. To that end, we will create mass party organizations, <clears throat> which, will, which we shall engage the general populace. These organizations will penetrate society, bringing vast sections of society into the party's net, as well as allowing us a view into the conditions and circumstances in which our people find themselves in. The information we will gather will be used to create a plan of action based on these ideas and concerns of the people rooted in auto socialism, with the intent of relieving any problems they might have. Hopefully, this will strengthen the party's relationship with the masses. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. And which next up we're going to read about the Guiding Star. Uh, Ivan Serov is the axis upon which our state spins. He is the center stage, the leading man, the guiding light towards which we all gravitate. So look at this. Very cool. Sadly, not all of our leaders, uh, not all see our leader the way we do. Some see him as a tyrant, a monster, even insane. We must do our part to rectify the hearts and minds of these people and expose the truth about Serov to them. Posts will be printed and hung up, hymns written and sung, and monuments built and dedicated to him. All will know and acknowledge his greatness, and those who don't or refuse to will simply no longer be allowed to be part of this nation. Very good. And which we will next get in state poverty relief programs, which would be super, super good to improve our poverty rate, which as you saw in the very beginning, we've improved already. Carrot and the stick. Very good. Lavov uh, waited in line outside the benefits office, almost beside himself with joy. He'd waited for this since he... Since the first time he'd met the general secretary, before he was anything but a passionary left winger with funny ideas, and at last that promise was in sight. He remembered the dispassionate speech of the Gensec like it was yesterday. He'd spoken about future with land, bread, and solidarity for all, and unlike the others he'd seen, or seemed to believe in the peace he spoke of. It was all catnip for Levov, who hated the sight of guns since his father perished in the fall of the Union. The errant rabble who called themselves the left hadn't been any more convincing than the drooling reactionaries they opposed on this point. All and sundry seemed determined to march into the sunset, toting a gun in one hand and the other's enemy's skulls in the other. Only General Secretary Serov had promised true peace, true unity, and Lavov knew, with all the quiet absolution of a true believer that Serov would deliver. And he hadn't, hadn't he? The People's Provisions Pact, which was blared on every loudspeaker in the country, inviting the true sons of Russian soil to take what was owed them. Minimum wage, healthcare benefits, even what they called unionists without unions, all could be claimed with this verification of citizenship. The Red Party was here, and Lavov would really relish every minute of it. His cue number echoed from the receptionist's table. As Lavov approached the little booth, his knees nearly gave away from giddiness. Smiling, yes. Well, thank you, welfare officers. What can I collect my card? The receptionist shrugged. I'm sorry, sir. We went through your records. It says here you're a son of an Armenian. Security concerns and all. I'm, I'm sure you'll understand. She waved towards the exit. Next! His smile crumpled slowly like a wilting flower. We get acceptable pensions and generous unemployment subsidies. Who needed... Positive amount of deficit. Ah, yes. Keep growing, uh, deficits. Keep growing. But that's okay. Seraph is here to help us out. Seraph will not betray us like those others who followed before him. Or who stood in the footsteps before this guy. Now that is a okay. Just make sure that we're ready to build a lot of industry for the people and the party order. Without a clear leader and structure, we cannot hope to succeed in our goals of reuniting Russia and bringing it into the future. The party will be reorganized into a single, centralized, mechanized apparatus from which all orders will come down. The lower echelons of the structure will be most imp directly in contact with the populace and will work to implement any laws or orders effectively acting as a bureaucracy. The upper echelons of the party, culminating in a leader set off, will assess the data and make decisions based on said information, ultimately acting for for the benefit of Russia. And it seems like Africa has fallen apart. The horror? Ah, this is why you do not let Nazis take control of your government. Uh, sure. We get way better consumer goods, which is super nice. Actually, for here, we have the Guiding Star. The right dominant, we lose... Oh, wow. That's actually really bad. We lose that much stability. Minus 1%. Holy crud. Is that... I guess that's not good to do, I guess. Weekly manpower. Stability is still going up for now, but... Overseeing administration... Um, that's not really good. National Economic Policy, the NAP. 
The former economic policy of the Soviet Union wasn't necessarily bad. It simply wasn't properly suited for military and industry production, and it didn't prioritize the development of most important regions of the Soviet Union, Russia, as much as it should have. We will rectify this mistake when designing a new economic policy for Russia. This time all developmental resources will be directed towards the core Russian territory, and this development will focus on military production and... construction. One hot, one mine, one union. But after we do this first, of course. Thank you very much. Uh, both of you guys go and train if you need it. Anything here? Uh, no. That's really good. We will launch this stuff soon enough. Um, oh, oh, okay. I see now. Yeah, they actually annex them. That's actually okay with us, just because that just gives us, like, an entire line to do. But the Russian Auto Socialist Party. It's named were many, half springing from insults, half of dreams, seldom gathered as one. The house of the Russian fa Republic's factories and re government postings were many, but their workers were few. Precious little time could be afforded for the frivolity of mass gatherings, certainly not in the present circumstances. But some things were unavoidable and important enough for the party to address, so a working holiday was declared in the various congresses and the workers' councils convened. Serov gazed at them, talon certainly but unpolished, blunt and dull like steel that had been left in dank air for too long, edgeless. It would take work to weave them all into a knife worth wielding, and even if he wanted to succeed, he would have to start now. He asked a simple question. Left it hanging in the air like a noose, an invitation. Does anyone know what the superiors have done this last month, their subordinates? Into the deafening void that followed it, he began to drill the principle of mutual knowledge over and over, just like he'd been taught by the academy. Into their heads, simple, repetitive motion. It was almost like the conditioning techniques his commanders had speculated about using. This time, however, there'll be no time for trial runs. The Seraph began his next move, raising a piece of paper. It began to read names, aloud, outspoken, complainers and whiners and fearful. There they were, he said, welcome to leave. But should they say they would be honed in as something better, something greater. Demo demotions, of course, would follow, even revolutionary criticism, but the new departments would be livelier than ever, and the vitality that swarmed through the party would be one of unity, not swarming fragmentation. They would learn to love it, this unity, this discipline, this oneness, no matter how long it took to teach it to them. No matter. Um, do we really have enough divisions for this? Because if we do, I'm, I'm kind of okay just going to war with them anyways. Five divisions, is that okay? Um, these guys... Oh, actually, you guys are not... Like, that's a little bit too big. Oh, uh, that's the case, actually, then. Let's, get, let's do it like this, then. Go and spread yourselves out like this. That'll be alright. And then the revolution adventurism. Strengthen the left wing. Well, uh, let's do this first. Need more PP, anyways. The tactical prudence? Um... It honestly makes more sense if we go revolutionary adventurism, honestly. One big cooperative... We get more growth, which I do like. That's a right wing, though. The redefined Goss plan. Oh, that's probably okay with us, actually, right now. Um, What is this one like? Revolutionary Adventurism. Seems okay. Not great. High income weighted. Less, way less political power to get more income rate, though. Which is okay. Collective Vanguardism. You know what? Let's go to the left side, because we went the right side here. Then we'll go to the left side here. Revolutionary Adventurism. Strengthens the left wing, we get closed economy. The future of the Russian economy lies in the state. Modern social democrats warn against a sort of revolutionary political adventurism that we are pushing. They lack the will to fully reject the corporatist and capitalist systems of Italy and the United States. We have no such restrictions. We must continue to expand the process of nationalization in all industries under the government's control. We will bring Russia closer to the sort of autarkic self-sufficiency that other nations and Germany have strived towards. Might as well, right? Might as well. Um, if that's the case, uh, at this point, I want to just go to war pretty much now and suffer the consequences, so... There you go. We'll go to war with them. Hopefully. And revolutionary adventurism. But army were born, wouldn't be bad. Ah, uh, that's not too bad to get immediately, too. Uh, we have enough time to do this one first, and then we'll maybe do this one. I mean, I want to prove ourselves as much as possible, but I don't mind getting slightly more division organization, so that's not too bad. The eternal drill session of the spotless mind. Sergei fiddled with his food, if even he could call it that. Next to him, Vera made a face and made it as if to spit the offending mouthful away. This tastes as garbage as worse than the stuff my aunt used to make, and she was blind, mind you. Suvorov nodded from opposite them, pushing the plate to his empty lap. This worker's canteen is getting off to a very rocky start from all appearances. It had started with the announcement that the factory would be nationalized. For all the groaning that had brought the, brought the higher-ups, Sergei stood away a little hope for the future. After all, the new folks in the capital said the name of the workers like it was some kind of lucky charm, and surely they wouldn't let the words fall by the wayside, would they? But this series of new measures had destroyed the hope entirely. The and propaganda commissars had spoken nearly uninterruptedly about the need to keep the people's discipline. To move as one unified fighting proletarian force, and now they were bringing in the newfangled culinary optimism to boot. The only thing the latter had optimized, Sergei thought bitterly, had been his unwillingness to spend more than it was absolutely necessary on lunch rations. 
Whatever this new factory council measures was, he didn't like it either. Welding was a serious business. His friends could get hurt by the inhumane or inhuman standards the quotas were dictating. He made a mental note to speak to the overseers the state had appointed, at least the ones assigned to his factory seemed friendly enough. As the workday dragged to its close, Sege slipped off the assembly line on a smoke break to find the overseer. Raising his concerns to the kindly looking drayhead man, he bur burbled his enthusiasm for the new regime in hopes his the factory would be restored to some sensible quotas. The overseer's response was simple and small in eight words. We'll continue this until you get it right. The Army Reborn. The army that once swept across Russia was one that marched with purpose and motivation. That Red Army marched to spread socialism across Russia. It is important that it is understood that the Red Army never stopped marching. That Red Army is our own today, as our army is nothing more than a continuation of the Red Army that came before it. We share the same principles, the same doctrines, and most importantly, we share similar ideology, one that we're certain the or original Red Army would have marched to had they been aware of the order of socialism at the time. Yes, a balance must be struck. An absolute balance. Reunification of Russia. Uh, anything here? Really? Not really, no. Current influence is non-existent. They're in their sphere, which sucks, but hey! I don't care. It doesn't matter to us. And how are we building here? We're doing quite well. One and a half is not great. But we'll get there. We get more resource efficiency gain and more production efficiency growth, which is okay. Uh, it's going to take a while before we get any better poverty, but that's alright. And then redefine Goss plan. I kind of like that. I want to get that one done as fast as possible. Collective Vanguardism is not bad. Actually, that's not. That's really not. Ooh, 15%. That's pretty good. Uh, but more growth would be nice. But let's do Collective Vanguardism first. The people of Russia m must understand that through our collective will. Russia can achieve anything. There's no greater expression of this collective will than the workers' collective. This people, working together in thousands of collectives across Russia to form an even greater expression of the people, the state. We must spread this message to the masses. They must understand that they are the engine, the driving force, the power that has brought Russia as far as it has. So long as they believe that they are what's driving our state forward, they won't feel any need to actually seize control. Absolutely. Cool. And we lower that a little bit. A man in the Iron Fortress. If you're going to build that, please go ahead. Happy 1968. It feels weird for the first episode to be in 1968 already, so... Ah, good. Um, a reformation. Serov stared on with a grim determination as he presided over the largest military march the nation had undergone since the days of the Fallen Union, or at least that is what he claimed the procession before him. Behind Serov, a monolith stood, a monument to the ideals of Serov's Russia. A chain of wires hanging between two radio towers upon which five mutilated and maimed corpses hung. Before all of you, our most fearsome and raucous servant of Russia hangs the ideological manifesto of auto-socialism, an outline of the threats to our nation, both dissident and traitor, the first corps belonging to those who are neither nationalists nor believers in Marxist-Leninist philosophy. Anarchists, sewers of chaos. The second corpse belongs to the nationalists who do not recognize the supremacy of socialism. Reactionaries and tyrants. The third corpse is for those who follow in the footsteps of Marx, Engels, and Lenin. But do not love Russia or its people. The revisionists and corruptors of socialism. The fourth corpse is those most tragic of deaths. Followers of socialist thought and nationalists who have nevertheless rebelled against our righteous authority. They are contrarians who seek to destroy instead of reform. The fifth corpse is for a hidden threat. Those who claim to follow in our ideals in full but lie, their parents and the parents of the parents, have imparted upon them reactionary ideas, which goes on to taint them throughout their lives. But they are sly. These bourgeois parasites will do whatever it takes to remain alive until the dawning of all Russia, so that they may leech off of the state. We must strangle this threat in its cradle. To anyone who has... Con had concerns over the behavior of your fellow soldier citizen, raise your hands. The soldiers glanced at each other, concerned over what their response should be and what Seraph wanted of them. I have told you, raise your hands. Following Seraph's call, a wave of her hands, raised hands, erupted across the procession, and Seraph smiled. Redefine Gosplan. The Gosplan was the original central planning committee of the Soviet Union. It was the main driver and central planning system behind the Soviet economy existing from 21 until its dissolution in 45. The guiding principle behind the Goss Plan was the idea of a planned economy, an avenue through which the state could control the economy and ensure prosperity and safety. We will create a new Goss Plan, whose focus will be on building our military industrial complex into one of the most formidable on Earth, with productive capabilities to match. Soon, even Germany will be eclipsed by economic might. Well, it probably won't be too hard since Bowman's in charge and he's probably going to mess things up, but that is okay with us. Please, Bowman, please go right ahead and... Do what you must. Um, anything else here, really? No, we're actually pretty good on that stuff. Let's keep fo focusing on more gun stuff, actually, for now. Good amount of PP. Not enough, of course. Never enough, but that's okay. Yeah, that'd be nice to get. And then a leap into the future would be very good to get. But we can't do that one. Yep. The Goss Plan, just because I want to get that GDP growth, cost doesn't matter to me. Civilian factors would be really good to get, too. I think we'll go for that one next as well. Please come to the line. They do have some tanks. That's not good. 
But if we could just come through here and just cut these guys off, one division, a few divisions, oh, oh, they have quite a few tanks. Collective Vanguardism. And uh, the Ordo Socialists hold out, uh, hustled. What did the old Tsar's regime fall so many years ago? A strange question, but one worth asking. It wasn't the brutal treatment of the serfs or Tsar Nicholas's poor leadership, or even the war. In the end, it came down to bread. The people were starving, and when people were racked with hunger at the brink of death, they would do whatever they can think they have to do to fix their situation. Oftentimes, this turns into a rage against the government. Agriculture must be a priority in order to avoid such a fate for our government. Farms will be collectivized under state leadership to maximize output, and the people housed in state-controlled homes. The old social house will be one of plenty. Absolutely. Ah, so we're not going to go to war yet, just because, uh... I thought we would go to war eventually, but we're not. That sucks. Just because... You know, they annex these groups here, so which really is not good for us. It's alright. We'll still win in the end. Up to 50 freaking divisions. Wow. It's alright. We'll make sure our soldiers are ready. We need a lot more anti tank, huh? There you go. Do that. Sarah's five year plan. Serov quietly signed the paper sitting upon his desk. With his paper, Serov's five-year plan for the economy would be set in motion. The five-year plan would be revolutionary and ensure that Serov's men were well-equipped and prepared for war. The five-year plan was focused on heavy industry and military production. Among the major goals of this economic plan were the creation of industry safely distanced from any possible combat fronts, funneling more and more resources into producing tanks and armaments, and raise the annual industrial growth to levels unheard of elsewhere in Russia. All this military production would, of course, cause a heavy fall in consumer goods production, but true citizens of the Soviet Union will take this temporary sacrifice in stride and and any who don't can be persuaded. Hopefully the five-year plan could turn this untrained society of peasants into a truly advanced industrial economy. Serov would correct Bukharin's past mistakes. Now get to work. For quite a few times, for a few years, we get more... Oh, yes. Um, ground dynamics, that's not bad. Yeah, I'm going to do that too. Ground dynamics. Our population is growing, and with some, uh, our government predicts... Some within our government predict that we will experience a population boom now that Russia is finally stabilizing again. Soon, our nutritional needs may well surpass our capacity for production. A number of daring plans and ideas for boosting agricultural yields have been put forward in order to address a problem before it ever becomes a real issue. These plans range from uh, cl cl clear-cutting forests for more agricultural land to a plan, that divert water from rivers feeding into the Aral Sea to irrigate new farmlands. Because that won't hurt out the sea at all. You know what, spend more here. We want more output. We need more output, really, so. Guns looking good, motorized is looking really good, wow. How much do we have? Just one on motorized, that's it, huh. We have two on those guys. Main battle tanks, we need way more main battle tanks. Holy crap, yeah, definitely do. 30 divisions versus their 60 now. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of them there that's really good, but still. Consumer goods goes down by 10%, though, in exchange for PP. Oh, that's so good to get, but I want to do many in the industry next. Russia's industry lies broken after so many years of bombing and internal wars. However, among the rubble lies an opportunity to create a Russia stronger than ever before. Bukharin was a fool and traitor for many reasons, but the most important was in how he handled our industry. His lack of focus on heavy industry meant that when the time came to fight, we had no factories to forge implements with which to defend ourselves. We will not repeat his mistakes, of course. Reconstruction and economic reorganization were already underway, and this time we will make sure that heavy industry is front and center at the core of our new economy. Good, good, good. How are we building? Yeah, it's only one and a half, so that's not good enough. We must amend the industry first. Ah, better weapons, good. Good, good, good. Get some more defense and breakthrough. I love it. Well, we will make up... Well, we lack numbers, but we will definitely do better with quality divisions. Quality, quality, quality. This is okay. We could do that, but I don't really feel like doing it yet. Total mobilization, I definitely don't want to do that one yet. I'll do some first. Forging shield and sword. As a great man once said, their only real power comes out of the end of a long rifle. Unfortunately, Russia has a severe lack of rifles, or at least anti-tank. In fact, Russia has a severe lack of almost every single weapon. Tanks, planes, rifles, and artillery are all in short supply. A similar situation exists amongst our airfields, naval bases, and defensive fortifications. Simply put, Russia is rather weak right now, and even a relatively small invasion force from Germany could topple us. We must rectify the situation, and resources must be put towards building up our military industry to fend off would-be invaders and secure our own borders. I do apologize if I'm speaking a little bit quickly, it just, it is what it is, you know. Mentally, I'm going crazy. But that's okay. We love set off here, and we're doing it for the love of the people. I don't want to do this one. This hurts your PP by a whole lot. That's really bad for us. So I'd rather do this one first. 
Here's a PP, but whatever. Attack on the capital. There can be no private property, businesses, or financial institutions in the new Russia to come. The first global conspiracy of capitalists and corporatist nations plotting against us is how we felt last time. Bukharin was far too liberal with the NEP, and we cannot afford to repeat the old fool's mistakes. Private property and institutions will be seized and nationalized at once. Those who volunteer their property quickly and cooperatively will be given rewards like government positions or a large one-time payment. Those who refuse will face execution, of course. We lose 15% stability, we lose 0.2 daily PP, but we get more income, and we get better consumer goods, which is... This is definitely a trade-off, man. It's definitely a trade-off. I'm not going to say this is good or bad, it's just definitely a trade-off. Oh, baby boy. Oh, my goodness. But a leap into the future will be good to get. The introduction of socialism into Russia's economy must be accelerated if we're to protect ourselves from the capitalists and corporatist nations that threaten us on all sides. The idea that we need a grace period as we transition into a planned economy, or economic setup, is not only foolish but dangerous. The longer our economy remains open to the world, the more opportunities our enemies will have to exploit our weakness. We have the means and the will to implement socialism into the economy now, and if we must, we will wish to protect Russia from outside forces. And we will do so. Uh, keep doing that one, that's fine for now. Even though I don't think we really need it. Yeah, honestly, you know what, screw it, we're not going to do that one. That's not really worth it right now. Uh, better, better armor. Nice. Uh, do we lose a few divisions here? We might have lost maybe a few? Huh, that's weird. Okay, well, whatever. We have a good amount of divisions anyways right now, so that's pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Spend, spend, spend. Nothing there yet. Attack on the capital and a leap into the future. It is 68, so 69 we'll be able to go to war. I'm not going to do total mobilization until later, though. So, one big cooperative is not bad. Gonna improve. This one will be GDP will improve significantly, which is nice. A great conspiracy. So be it. So be it. So be it. And let us conclude with one of these. A new sun of the east. That's not bad. A blueprint for struggle. Clandestine services. Oh, that's not bad. I like that one too. Twenty-five days. Yeah, let's get that one for more consumer goods. I think that's pretty good. There's stuff here too, but we'll see what happens. Um, this stuff is not bad. I like it, but. Army professionalism begins to improve by a new sun in the east. The spirit of revolution is all but been crushed worldwide. The repressive German and Japanese regimes that seek to smother anything even resembling a possible revolt or revolution. We must act as a counterbalance to the smothering effect. We will act as a sun to a seed, nourishing the revolutionary spirit and providing sustenance so that it may one day grow into a full-blown revolution. A revolution that encompasses the whole world so that one day all oppressed peoples may be freed. Uh, such a dream is ways off, but... All it takes to start is a seed and some sunlight, but I hope you enjoyed our first episode playing as Seraph. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will go to war with Pavel Batov, and then hopefully reunite at least that part of Russia. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.